Does being older make you wiser, or should you actually be a 20-something hedge fund jockey and bet the world without really knowing it? Our guest today, Charles Morris, you've written a book called The Sages, which right. focuses on three older, wiser folks, Paul Volcker, I sort George of like Soros. older folks. Ab I, I absolutely. Sort of have a weak, I sort of have a weak spot. For and, and Warren yeah. Buffett, these are all obviously very wise and yeah. talented people. And, it, and tell us the message of that book. Well, what I liked about these three, three guys, I do know George reasonably well and Paul Volcker I know reasonably well at this point. I had never met Warren Buffett. He was tied up trying to fix his firm at the time I was doing the book, but there's so much out on him. These are three guys. They're all between 78 and 79. I think Volker's just turned 80. And they saw this coming in 2001, 2002, 2003. And they were out there for the most part, except for Paul, because he wouldn't do that while Alan Greenspan was still running, running the Fed. And they were out there saying, look, this is really, this can't go on. And Paul said at one point, he said, gee, around 2004, 2005, I thought maybe I was just wrong because it kept going up and up and up. But you could hardly, and, and Soros and Buffett have built their whole, their whole careers about seeing where markets are going wrong and taking the other side of that bet, and that's what they basically did. Uh, so I thought this would be, so it's, it's a short book, it's a, prof, a profile of each, and I try to capture, you know, not how you should personally manage money, because you can't do what Warren Buffett or George Sor Soros did, but, you know, how they think and what they were thinking about during this time. And so what do you think it is, actually, about actually, that, that makes you wiser? It's common sense. It's not trusting math never taking advice from somebody that you can't understand, uh, never buying something that you don't under, understand, uh, taking the view that if a smart person like you or me doesn't understand what these guys are talking about, there's a good chance that they're wrong and they're, and they're playing a confidence game. And basically, all three of them assume that and the, these are my words, but it's a, it's a common thread there. Finance is the only place where people can make huge amounts of money very fast by taking risky bets with other people's money. So you never trust the guy who's making huge amounts of money that way. And there are lots of younger folks who are making huge amounts of money betting other people's money who are really smart and who are also actually good people who don't yeah. want to, in fact, go to Vegas and blow it all, but think mm -hmm. that they're doing the right thing. Right. Then you have Buffett, Volcker, and Soros doing something slightly differently. How much does experience, having seen the cycles before, and confidence in their own judgment without being stupid, how much does that come into it? Well, it certainly helps, particularly in a Paul Volcker role where he was playing the sort of global regu regulator at a certain point. In terms of... I think the average investor, it helps, uh, but it, Buffett and Soros do something else too. I mean, they both have, like Soros kind of has this and, and tenna for every little quiver in the global market. So that's not something that the average person can replicate. So Volcker came out very recently and said, yeah. whoa, people in the world, other governments are starting to get nervous about our huge deficits, our huge debts. If we go back to his being early, at least, in his wisdom in saying it couldn't go on in the early 2000s, right. several years early, but should we now be realizing that this is, in fact, oh, a serious I mean, issue now that Paul Volcker saw Paul was about right it? in 2003 when he was really worried about it, and boy, he's really right now. And you have guys come on and say, you know, don't worry about that. Worry about that, for heaven's sake. I mean, but given his that. timing record, should we be thinking, no worries for a few years. Oh, in 2013, then you can start to, <laughs> start to sweat be. about it. No, the point is, is that at this point, it can happen in any, it could be seven minutes from now, something horrible happens. So I think that we're going to be in a knife's edge for a long time. Listen, no one, nowhere ever has a world or a country had this much debt and taking this kind of risk with a central bank, with the kind of balance sheet it's got, we're going to be walking on a knife's edge for a long time, and there is no history at all that we can use to guide us. 
And that's kind of a, of a scary thing. Thank you, Charles. Okay.